Good Friday afternoon. It's August 4th. This is Micah Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates, uh, bringing you today's True View Exteriors Severe Outlook. So let's get into the True View Severe Outlook and uh, take a look at the latest SPC Outlook. Uh, this will probably be updated here sometime this evening. Maybe they'll wait till the morning. But for now, there's uh, the entire state of Indiana remains under a slight risk for severe on Sunday. Uh, this could potentially come in two different waves, uh, one in the afternoon with pop-up storms that may have a better uh, tornado and hail potential, and then a uh, more solid line that looks to come through late sa uh, Sunday evening into early Monday that will be more of a uh, damaging wind threat. So let's take a look here. Let's go to the internet and take a look at a couple of things. It's going to be a lot of information. I'm going to try to cram this in a short period of time. We're looking at the uh, water vapor view, and we're watching some storms, uh, a storm cluster that passed through in northeastern Missouri, southwestern Illinois earlier, uh, bringing those areas continued issues with heavy rain as the rain just continues around like a ring of fire around this uh, high-pressure system. Uh, but we look out here, and we've got two areas we're watching. we got a developing uh, low up here. That will be our Sunday storm maker. And then there's this low pressure coming out of southeastern Nebraska into southwestern Iowa. And that one we need to watch and see what it does uh, overnight tonight and during the day tomorrow. Uh, if that uh, low pressure does what I suspect, uh, we're looking at if you look here at the yellows right here, that's dry air. It kind of denotes the edge of a cooler air boundary, and it's trying to sink to the southwest. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of different model outcomes to show the uncertainty in this whole thing. But uh, I believe this, is, this will still suppress this to our southwest. It'll drop a heavier storm cluster down across many of the same areas along St. Louis and into western uh, Kentucky, Western Tennessee again overnight tonight into early morning. However, the higher resolution model, American model data is disagreeing with that. So I'll show you that here in just a minute. And then once this gets out of the way, depending on what it does, will affect the storm potential Sunday afternoon. But I believe Sunday evening uh, is still going to be on track regardless from this low pressure up here. So first, I'm going to show you the European model. This is the 6Z run. The uh, the 12Z run will be, it's probably starting to generate now, but I don't know. Let's see. I should have done this before I came out here, but let's take it. We're on the College of DuPage website uh, right now, and let's see if we got any more recent data. Now, it's still 6Z, so uh, we'll take a look at the 6Z European, and let's bump this ahead first. This is uh, late tonight, and you can see a storm cluster from the low pressure that was right here. And the European, you'll see, will dive this to the south, to our southwest. You can see it, you know, loading up on the heavy precipitation, kind of in the same area, southwestern, southern Illinois, southeastern Missouri, uh, getting into southwestern Indiana a little bit, but it, it basically keeps us tracked farther to our southwest. And then you get into the day tomorrow afternoon, maybe some pop-up, you know, storms around. Uh, if they do, if anything does pop up tomorrow afternoon, it may be a super soaker. We're going to have a lot of precipitable water available. And um, that gets on out of here. And then we get into uh, early Sunday. You can see there's another cluster that goes off to our southwest. And then you can see the potential for just pop-ups. I think it's probably underdone. Pop-up storms possible Sunday afternoon. Again, to me, that's where the best tornado and hail potential will be. And then the uh, the stronger wind threat then will come through late Sunday evening into early Monday morning with a strong line. And a lot of times these are the ones that will produce the, uh, the damaging winds. But all modes of severe will remain on the table even with this line. But just damaging winds will be the main threat with it. And then the uh, Euro gets it on out of here by Monday, late Monday morning, early Monday afternoon. 
Now let's take a look at the American data real quick, the high resolution data, and uh, see what what it's doing. Again, here's this uh, low pressure. This is the uh, NAM 3K, and here's this low pressure that's uh, currently exiting or moving into southwestern Iowa. And this look at what the American data does. You can see the spin of the low, and you see it keeps it farther north and begins to spin uh, rain and stuff. This is late tomorrow morning, getting closer to around noon, and uh, actually probably about 10 o'clock in the morning. And then you see there's about noon, and you can see what it does. It, it keeps some pop-up storms around tomorrow afternoon. It keeps that uh, initial low much farther north, then spins it through, and here we are into the wee hours of Sunday morning. It's still got pop-up storms around. And it spins it on out as we get into Sunday afternoon. If that rain pops up Sunday morning, if it pops up before sunrise, it could help juice the air up. But if it's raining after sunrise, uh, then that could help eliminate some of the afternoon severe threats. So there's no way to know for sure. We're just going to have to wait and see with that initial low that's over Iowa, what it ends up doing. And then as we get out to the far reaches of the at NAM 3K, this would be at 8 o'clock Sunday evening. Then you can see it's beginning to develop another uh, convective line. Again, I think the NAM 3K is too far, uh, too far north with the uh, initial wave and probably too far west with this uh, secondary wave. But I just wanted to show you the other options. I'll hurry and show you the uh, HRRR real quick as well. Yes, I'm going to stick with the 12Z because it's got a longer range on it. And uh, that's back up. And here we are. Uh, this is very early Saturday. And you can see it does something very similar, but it comes a little farther south than the. It's kind of in between the European and the NAM 3K, but it's still, I mean, this is into uh, early afternoon Saturday and it's got storms around. And then uh, it's got a pretty con uh, strong convective line coming through uh, very late uh, Saturday evening. And then we can see it keeps that spin of the low around into the end of Sunday morning. And then uh, still has some storms around. This would be around 8 a.m. Sunday morning. We need to see what, to, what that first low and that chain does. Uh, back here would be our secondary low with the that will be deepening and bring our uh, main severe threat late Sunday. This video is longer than I wanted, but there there are so many moving pieces going right now that we need to watch out for and see what that first low does tomorrow. If we're seeing storms, you know, even pop up storms around tomorrow, and we're seeing that low pressure farther to the north and east, it may reduce some of our afternoon severe threat Sunday. But again, I still think the Sunday evening threat is on regardless. So we'll just have to wait and see what it decides to do over the next 24 hours. I will, uh, of course, I'll do one of these videos tomorrow as well and uh, update you as it makes itself a little more clear. So with that said, this I've gone on too long. This is had the, been the true view, severe outlook. Uh, if by chance we end up with any kind of severe damage around here and you need your home fixed up, definitely contact Alex at True View Exteriors and they will uh, do a great job for you. So until tomorrow, this is Micah Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates. All you beautiful people have a great day. Thank you.